when it's personal and painful. When it's personal, when it's painful, humble yourself. Verse 2, during supper, this was a, probably some matzah, some fish maybe, some wine. Uh, supper arrives. During supper, so apparently they sat there for a while, and, and it wasn't like he jumped to this in five seconds. They were, the food had arrived. They were starting to eat. The room was, can you imagine? It smelled. It was, it was, it was like, really? And everyone was like, not me, not me, not me, not me. I don't know where the slaves are. I, I don't know where to serve. I don't know. Not me. During supper, verse 2, when the devil, oh, interesting, when the devil had already put it into, we're going to talk about betrayal next week because that's what's in the paragraph starting in verse 18. But um, just basically, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus, who sold him for 30 pieces of silver. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, look, there's nothing more perverse than betrayal. And, and there's nothing more personal. There's nothing more painful than betrayal. You're home early. There's a strange car in the driveway, into the house, upstairs, betrayed. Secret meeting at the office, and you're not invited, and you walked by and you see everyone in there. Why am I not in there? You sit in your office and a envelope slid under your door, betrayed. You're helping and giving and loving and serving and doing good and doing your best, and apparently it's not good enough. And you've been betrayed. Now, now staggeringly, stratospherically, when you feel most righteous in your indignation and most elevated in your right, as Jesus must have felt. I mean, I'll just say, if I was sitting there, I'd be like, come on, Jesus. You keep mentioning him. We all know he's going to betray you. You throw him out. We have to have him in here in our dinner. Does he, does he have to be part of this? How many people would have had some of that feeling? How many people would have enjoyed the Last Supper and listened to the, the, the final chalk talk um, a little better if Judas wasn't there? Put up your hand if you're for that. I think we could have got a consensus on that point. But, nope, nope, nope. Judas is going to get his feet washed too. And uh, when it's personal and painful, humble yourself. Come on up here and help me for a sec, guys. I got to need a little help with something. I want to just talk because this is so counterintuitive. And based on your personality, we all have ways. Guys, guys these, these guys are pinch. Oh, my. <laughs> that's good. These guys are pinching me. And I'm in a little pinch right now. And, and um, um, there's things that we do when we're in a pinch that, that make it worse, not better. And, and so when you're in a pinch, um, five things uh, to do when you're in a pinch. Uh, here's the first one, um, uh, five ways to get out of a pinch. Um, um, the first one, I think, um, is fight. I'm going to fight you guys. You don't have to fight me. Fight. How many people, that's your play? Put up your hand. Come on, you're in church. So that's my play. I'm going to fight out of this. Okay. Um, that's, not, that's not a good plan. That doesn't work good. It makes it worse a lot of times. And, okay, here, here's something else. Um, I'm in a pinch, and these guys are a little good at this. Um, I'm going to flee. I'm going to run, and I'm going to get away. And the problem, though, is, is that this is very likely not where God wants me. And, and I could go to a different family. I could go to a different job. I could go to a different city. I could go, I could make a, I could flee. But um, uh, as life progresses, you begin to see that a lot of the problems associated with this pinch are in the mirror. And so um, uh, fleeing isn't necessarily going to uh, fix that. And so another thing that I might tend to think of doing is, is, well, I'll just, you know, and if you're not a fighter or a runner, maybe you're a person who just, you know, just gives up. You just give up. I'm just going to give up. And it doesn't seem to be improving. <laughs> and you just, you give up. But just kind of flound, just kind of laying down in the problem, that's not going to work. And then I think sometimes what you're inclined to do is, is to try to talk your way out of it. And you know, you know, you, this isn't right the way that you're pinching me right now. And I want to, I don't want to sort, you need to stop doing. 
and, and sometimes what you're really only left with and should have gone to a lot sooner is just, just get low. Just right there, just get as low as you can, as fast as you can. And just humble yourself in the midst of a pinch. I, I, I gotta believe Jesus had so much on his mind. I gotta believe he was feeling so many things. And, and, and to think that he just got up and started washing their feet. I find his example awesome and motivating. When it's personal and painful, humble yourself.